recovery program outlines key actions to strengthen the city after the pandemic, including issues that disproportionately affect older Londoners, such as digital access, accessible public spaces, and mental health and wellbeing. Unfortunately, ageism still runs rampant in our society, often resulting in older residents being sidelined or dismissed. So to ensure that everyone's perspective is considered, I want to convene an annual Citizens' Assembly to scrutinise London's budget and recovery plan and make recommendations for change before they are approved. Without a deliberate effort to extend power to a more diverse cross-section of London, which includes the vital voices of older Londoners, we will not remove the barriers that prevent us from becoming a truly successful city. It is essential that our pandemic recovery takes social isolation seriously, especially amongst older Londoners. We have seen in this pandemic the huge cost of isolation in terms of our health and well-being. We have also seen the true value of care though, whether it's unpaid care provided by family and friends or formal care. The overwhelming majority of those providing care, it's worth noting, are women. So if we want to maintain and improve care and support, for older and disabled people, then we need a care-led recovery. So I am committed to creating a social care academy in London and to driving down zero hours contracts and driving up pay for care workers so we can make London the best place to be a care worker and the best place to receive care. And for unpaid carers who play a vital role in keeping loneliness at bay, I think it's an outrage that they are entitled to only £67.25 per week. That's why I am committed to creating a carers fund to top up their allowance. I am also determined to change the way we do planning in the city so that it focuses less on the commuting patterns of mostly male workers and instead asks how can we create accessible communities? I will push to regenerate areas of London so that they are designed and built to work for women, families, older and disabled people. Pensioner poverty is a stain on our society. It is something that particularly affects older women who are less able to save across their lifetime because of time spent caring for others and lower pay. At the national level, I have been campaigning to right this wrong by introducing a single rate of pension tax relief so that the poorest pensioners are not paying more and are able to actually save. I have also been campaigning for compensation for those affected by the sudden changes to the state pension age. As Mayor of London, my focus will be on bringing down living costs for the poorest people. I will bring back a strong social rent policy because housing that is 80% of market rates is not affordable for the vast majority. And I will also fight to protect transport subsidies for those who need them most. As Mayor, I will make mobility a top priority to ensure that older London residents can travel around our city freely. Public transport tends to cater to a younger workforce and has often failed to meet the needs of low-income workers, those with disabilities and older generations. But accessible transport is essential to increase employment and other opportunities for those who need them most. So I will conduct a feasibility assessment for part-time travel cards, calculated with the same discount as current travel cards, but available for two, three, and four days of travel per week on a weekly, monthly, and annual basis. I will also commit to only increasing bus fares in line with inflation and freezing them where and when possible as TfL's income is restored. In terms of jobs, we know that when the economy is squeezed, it is mothers, marginalised groups, disabled and older people who are first in the firing line. We need a mayor who will fight for a recovery package from government that recognises and addresses these inequalities. 
and I will also maximise spending from City Hall to provide apprenticeships and other support for the groups most affected. Research has shown that adults over 65, especially women, comprise half of non-internet users in the UK. Yet so much of life has moved online, including vital services like banking or council services. To me, this is a form of social exclusion as well as digital exclusion. So if elected, I will work with the relevant stakeholders to ensure that digital connectivity is offered to all those who live in the capital. I will also ensure that the needs of older Londoners are included in digital training programmes. And I will make sure that City Hall, the GLA, TfL and all the other bodies that the Mayor is responsible for provide public service information that is accessible to everyone. Ageism is a significant driver of the inequalities experienced by older Londoners. The pandemic has exposed the true scale of ageism in this country, with horrifying narratives about lives worth saving and about the burden of older people in the NHS. These dangerous attitudes played out in policy too, in the decision, for example, to remove duty of care and guidance to ration treatment and of course, in the failure to develop a social care policy that people can actually rely on. We created the Women's Equality Party because we believe that equality is better for everyone. And we want to change the way politics is done, who gets to have their say and who gets to be heard. And we want to create the kind of political will and leadership that it pushes equality to the top of the agenda. Electing just one Women's Equality Party representative to the London Assembly will enable us to hold the Mayor to account every day and build a brighter, better and more equal future for every single person in our city. Thank you so much.